Why hide your skin? If you can help heal your skin from within. With Dupixent, adults saw long-lasting, clearer skin and significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. We're gonna get you. No, ma'am. Tomorrow we go behind the scenes of Heidi Klum's Halloween Horror Club. Hey, and don't forget, you only have three more days to experience Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. For tickets and info, just hit up their website oh now. Listen, we couldn't leave Jurassic World without <laughs> saying hello to Blue, and you can come here to visit the Raptor Encounter. It's very, very real. I think I need to go. <laughs> Y'all can say goodnight. I need to go. Thank you, David Arquette. You are our friend. Thank we appreciate you. you being here with us today. Please come back and visit soon. I sure will. And you can catch Bozo the Clown at Empire Circus in Brooklyn starting November 12th. Oh, see? Blue's here. That's blue. See? It's just blue. See? It's we just blue. We leave you now. Happening now. People running for their lives as an argument turns into a shooting. One person hit. The search for suspects is underway. We have a crew on the scene next. Local researchers are trying to understand why some people have prolonged symptoms related to COVID-19. Coming up, details on a new study that hopes to answer that question. Temperatures taking more of a dip tonight than they did last night. I'll let you know how cool it'll be in your neighborhood, along with a sneak peek at the Halloween forecast. See you in a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. But now we do begin with breaking news. First at five, a shooting forcing students in two schools to go on lockdown. One of those schools, John Jay High School, right across the street from the restaurant parking lot where that shootout took place. It's in the 7700 block of Marbach Road. The other school, Mary Hull Elementary, just a few streets away. Our John Paul Barajas joins us now live from this scene. So John Paul, tell us, what have you been able to gather so far about how this happened, how this started? Steve, Stephania, what we know is that one person, possibly two, were shot. Police say they got calls for a fight at this location around 1230. And then when they were headed here, they got more calls that changed from a fight to gunshots. And now I want to show you video of that of those gunshots that have been circulating on social media. It seems like a gunfight. You hear multiple pops from the gun, yet no one is screaming or running away, just ducking behind cars. Even looks as if one person in a white hoodie takes cover for a bit, then while using the car for cover, starts shooting back. The only time you do hear yelling is when it appears one person was hit. 100 people, 100 plus, 150 plus people, someone saw something. So we absolutely need anyone's assistance in getting any information to our homicide detectives. Police say when they arrived, those 100 to 150 people all took off running. So at this time, they have been there have been no arrest. They had there is a second incident that occurred throughout all this. An adult male was walking down the street and got hit by a car who didn't stop to render aid. The status of both the shooting and hit and run victim are currently unknown. And at this time, they don't know how many shooters there were, but they do believe the suspects they're looking for are young adults. And again, this happened right across the street from John Jay High School. Police haven't said if they believe anybody involved attended the school, but because it happened so close, the campus was on a modified lockdown until campus and school let out. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, that aside, you know, it's been a really busy day for police because they just took a man into custody who they think is connected to a string of robberies. Right here, you're looking at Jonathan Martinez, the 25-year-old accused of carjacking a woman at gunpoint near Ingram Mall. You want to talk about being busy. That was yesterday just before noon. 20 minutes later, someone reported a robbery at a CVS on San Pedro near North Star Mall. After that, someone else said the Walgreens on Austin Highway near Harry Wurzbach was robbed. All the witnesses describing the same suspect. Police arrested Martine as they say he admitted to those robberies. And now we're also learning more about a deadly head on crash. The 32 year old motorcyclist who died is Isaac Lemon. Yeah, the accident actually happened in the 2600 block of Rabel Road near South Flores and 281 in South Bear County. The sheriff's office tells us the motorcycle and truck crashed around 9 a.m. The motorcyclist died on his way to the hospital. The truck driver's OK. 
he is not expected to face charges. Okay, so now there's something that you really need to pay attention to because Crime Stoppers needs your help. It's trying to solve an eight-year-old murder case, and they want to know if you have tips in the death of Sean Cannon. Yeah, Sean Cannon is 20, was 29 years old. He was killed in 2013 in the 2500 block of Agonier. That is near Edison High School. Witnesses told police that after someone opened fire, they saw a late 90s model Ford Expedition leave the scene. If you know anything about Cannon's death, call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. Now, since the pandemic began, San Antonio has reported a total of more than 320,000 COVID-19 cases. And while many people have recovered, some still aren't back to full health. You could help the medical community answer an important question in all this. That's why do some people who get COVID suffer long-term symptoms and they're so-called long haulers. So UT Health is looking for hundreds of adults, maybe like you, for a new study. They basically want to understand more about those long haulers. Our Tiffany Huerta spoke with a San Antonio nurse who falls into that very category. In fact, she hasn't been able to work for months since getting COVID. Brain fog, I had that. You know, headaches, I had that weakness. I had that. After being diagnosed with COVID-19 last year in December, Jennifer Ramey says her life changed drastically. I have been a nurse 28 years, but I haven't returned to work since COVID. Although she was never hospitalized, Jennifer says she had long COVID symptoms. I had serious cognitive issues. Um, I couldn't remember things. Fatigue. A new federally funded study could help people like Jennifer. What we'll be doing in our partnership with University Health is looking for people who have recently had COVID-19, who are recovering, as well as some people who had COVID-19 a while ago and are in recovery. UT Health San Antonio is partnering with University Health and 17 other sites across the country to learn more about the long-term impacts of COVID-19. They are looking for 900 adults to take part in the study. Researchers will follow patients for four years. They will draw blood and do physical assessments to track their health. Our Latino community and our African American community have been disproportionately impacted by COVID. So we are very excited to be a part of this study and to help understand how COVID affects diverse communities. I think that's something that we in San Antonio can really contribute. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. So now a reminder here, if you haven't voted in the state constitutional amendment election you and you want to do it early, you have just a little more than a day left. You see, because the polls stay open tonight through 8 o'clock and they reopen tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. They're going to be open from 8 to 8. And there are a number of races on the ballot, including municipal races, school district races, House District 118, and of course, constitutional amendments. You can find all this information right now on KSAT.com. A reminder, election day is next Tuesday, November 2nd. Look at these numbers today. Very fall like 51 in the morning officially at the airport in San Antonio. Cooler in several neighborhoods, of course, outside the airport. 78 the high temperature. The high temperature was exactly average for the day today. Looking at the readings right now, Eagle Pass at 82 or 75 currently in Leon Springs. Lakey 77. Overall comfortable and a lack of any humidity or mugginess in the air. 77 wind crest and 78 currently in Seguin. As we go through the evening, get ready for temperatures to fall off quickly. Clear sky, a calmer wind and dry air means we'll be low 60s by 10 o'clock, upper 50s already by midnight, even cooler tomorrow morning than what we had today. I'll break it down for you all across our area, how much cooler it's going to get. And we'll talk about the trick or treating forecast in a few minutes. Stephanie. Just keep the sweaters handy. All right, Adam, thank you. So here's something that also affects all of us, and that's the future of transportation. Local leaders want to know what types of technology you use and also what you'd like to see in the future. Our Samuel King is on that story. So, Sam, this is really important because whatever the public decides to share on this could really affect the way that city leaders make transportation plans for the future, right? Right across uh, the area and things like curbside pickup and working remotely, Stephania, those have become common over the past year and a half and emerging technologies could further revolutionize how we get things delivered and how we get around. The Alamo Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is asking the public what excites them about technologies like drone delivery. 
or electric vehicles their and their concerns like privacy or safety. The MPO is coming up with a 2050 transportation plan and will use results to help prioritize where funding should go. We probably are not even thinking of some of the technologies that could be around in 10 years, but this is a chance for uh, our agency to, to try to start documenting how people feel. That survey is available on the MPO's website, and we'll have a link on our website, ksat.com, including about the VIA plans for that as well. As for the evening commute, we are seeing uh, some issues on Loop 410 on the north side near the airport. This is a view at New Braunfels Avenue. Had a crash there earlier, so we'll take a look here at the travel time between uh, 35 and 281, nine minutes in each direction. Also watching some issues downtown. Watch out for the wind if you're on the elevated highways. Guys, over to you. Now here's a heads up. It's going to cost you more money to heat your home this winter. Sorry to break it to you, but natural gas prices, they're up. The Energy Information Administration expects the average family will pay about $746 for natural gas during cold months. And for context here, that's up 30% from just last winter. And now that we're seeing some chilly mornings, if you don't rely on natural gas to heat your home and instead turn to space heaters, it's time to talk about safety. They're great at warming up drafty spots around the house. Of course, you want one that heats well, but you also want one that's safe. 12 Inner Sides, Marilyn Moritz with space heater test results and some recommendations before you buy. On chilly days, a space heater can warm you up, but they can be dangerous. One third of all home heating fires involve space heaters, so safety matters. The safest space heaters turn off automatically if they become too hot or if they're knocked over. Consumer Reports ran a series of safety tests, like will the heater on high setting ignite cotton fabrics? Choosing the right space heater comes down to what you want it to do. You need to consider whether you're just trying to warm yourself up or whether you're trying to heat an entire room. Our tests show that not all models can do both. This mannequin with sensors measures how well a heater spot heats, and this chamber checks how well it warms up the whole room. So here are some recommendations. This Vornado was excellent for spot heating and safety. If you want to heat the whole room, CR recommends this comfort zone. Excellent in fire tests, but it is hotter to the touch than others. It's $50. If you have kids or pets and you're concerned about hotter surfaces, CR says this Lasco bladeless tower is a good alternative for $100. And some safety reminders. Never use extension cords with space heaters. Keep the heater on the floor and at least three feet away from flammables like bedding or drapes. If you're intrigued by those little personal size space heaters, consider this. Consumer Reports said they only did so-so in their spot heating tests. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, now coming up, students learning some valuable lessons at one San Antonio Independent School District Elementary School. We're going to tell you what they've been collecting, where they're volunteering, and what one fourth grader thinks all about it. It's up next. Dia de los Muertos is just around the corner, which means that the preparations are in full swing to honor, celebrate, and welcome back your loved one who has passed away. And we want to hear from you. Share with us your must-have items for your ofrendas or altars, and also tell us a little bit about the people that you are honoring this year on Day of the Dead. So we want you to submit those pictures at the link below, and we hope that you'll celebrate this holiday with us. And we'll share those pictures and stories on KSAD News Now on Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead. All right, this is going to put a nice little smile on your face. It's a mission to help others, but with a little twist. For the last 12 years, students at Briscoe Elementary and SAISD have donated things like stuffed bears and blankets to the San Antonio police, and the whole idea was to comfort kids in crisis situations. Makes sense, right? Well, this year, they're switching it up a little bit. They're helping the San Antonio Food Bank, and they've collected enough food to fill eight barrels. It's a lot of food. Now, remember that they're doing this through their school, so it's a different kind of lesson. 
got to give away stuff, knowing that we didn't, we weren't gonna get nothing in return. We, it's a, we were risk takers, and we gave all our stuff. We gave all the food we had to make sure families, had, and we didn't get nothing back for it. Okay, he's adorable. I just want to give him a little hug. And that's not all, because even after those kiddos donated all that stuff, they went to the food bank to volunteer some more. Pretty nice. Job well done. All right, well, is it an NDO no-go? We're working on several stories for the News at 6. Myra Arthur joins us live from the newsroom to give us the rundown. Myra. We're going to explain what Steve just said. The first story, it's going to stir some strong opinions here, guys. San, several San Antonio City Council members, they want to expand the city's non-discrimination ordinance, often referred to as the NDO. They want to expand that to include private businesses. Now, the city already has a non-discrimination ordinance on the books at the moment, but that does not cover private businesses that don't do business with the city. We'll tell you how this proposal would work if council members eventually sign off on it. We're also working on a story about the incredible growth in West Bear County. Anyone familiar with that area can tell you all about the traffic there, but the growth is still happening. It's continuing. And along with that, we'll need to come more than just some traffic solutions. For one, access to health care that doesn't require a commute. Our Jesse Degollado was talking to people who live in West Bear County about what they need what they want to see happen there. We got that and a lot more coming your way at six o'clock, guys. In West Bear County, that's for sure. It's a booming area. A lot of our area is a booming area. Many yeah. locations around yeah. here. There's construction everywhere. And I of think course. people are finding out what a great place this is to live. The secret's out. The secret's right, out. Right, Stephanie. Yeah. She right. got in on yeah. it with yeah. us. Yeah. And actually, fall like again, weather is back in place and it's going to be here for a stretch. Cooler, even cooler tomorrow morning than what we had today. Still a little bit gusty tomorrow, but not as bad. And then comfortable trick or treating weather. I'll give you the details. A sneak peek at the Halloween forecast coming up. First, let's talk temperatures and how cool it's going to be getting later on tonight. You look at the readings across the state, 60s up north, 70s in central Texas, and then you get down into deep south Texas, especially down in the valley. We've got some readings well into the 80s. Brownsville, the exception right now at 87. Currently here in town, we're at 77, but Catula a little bit warmer at 87. Del Rio at 84. Let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. We're talking widespread 40s, even close to 40 degrees in the hill country. 44 in Hondo, 45 tomorrow Canyon Lake. In and around San Antonio, we're looking at a temperature of 48 degrees. And you look closer, and for the most part, mid and upper 40s to start the day tomorrow. Bernie, 45. Converse, 48. And Elmendorf, right near 50 for the morning low. Looking ahead, temperatures do rise a little bit. I mean, we're talking by Sunday, Monday, Morning readings at that point back in the 50s. However, next couple of mornings, we're talking 40s. And even on Saturday, that's our low point with temperatures then down in the mid 40s. So noticeable changes and actually running a good 10 degrees below average. The wind, that was a headline today. Gusty winds out there between 30 and 40 miles per hour throughout the day today. The winds are subsiding as we speak, but still, you notice it. We've got those northwesterly gusts at 30. It's starting to diminish a little bit, especially farther to the west, closer to the Rio Grande. Nonetheless, we notice it, but the wind will subside overnight tonight, just like the past couple of nights, pretty much a calm wind while we're sleeping. And first thing in the morning, by the afternoon tomorrow, the wind picks up again. It's going to be gusty. We're talking gusts to about 25 and 30 miles per hour. So not as outrageous as what we had the past couple of days, but still noticeable in terms of that gusty wind. Okay, here's the big picture across the state right now. We've got clear skies, clear skies from here all the way to the west coast. But the big storm system, the wound up system is in the central part of the country, right over St. Louis. That's where it's centered right now. You see this big counterclockwise circulation. That's the upper level low that gave us our active weather. That's going to stay east of us and continue to push eastward. We're in this northerly flow aloft. In turn, dry air and a lot of sunshine. And speaking of dry air, the newest drought monitor, of course, Thursday issued today. Now 24 of 24 percent of Texas is considered in drought. So we've actually gone deeper into drought 
as a whole across the state. Despite the rain that we had the past couple of weeks, it just didn't fall in the right spots particularly just southwest of San Antonio. That's where we've actually fallen more into a moderate drought situation and even a little bit of a severe drought spot, southern Maverick County on into Carrizo Springs. So obviously we could use more rain. There isn't even a hint of it in the seven day forecast until we get to the middle part of next week. A few showers possible then. This evening, cooling very quickly. Clear sky, calm wind, low humidity. We all know what that means good radiational cooling. So by midnight, we're already down in the 50s. Tomorrow we start the day at 48 degrees. That's locally. We talked about the temperatures elsewhere cooler in the hill country Then nothing but sunshine 75 by the afternoon into the weekend, lower 80s by Sunday. However, for trick or treating weather, we're talking comfortable. Any costume will do by eight o'clock right near 70 degrees. So overall, very comfortable for trick or treaters. So for tomorrow's parade down at the Arneson across the river walk, you're saying high 60s, low 70s? Yeah, it, but cooling quickly. I mean, by 10 o'clock, we'll be in the 50s. Wow. Oh, right. okay. That's what my friends call sweater weather. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, coming up, uh, you're going to have a lot of people are doing this right now. Spurs fans keeping their fingers crossed. Come on. They're just praying for a good yeah. night. They'd like to finish a game well, but they're going to do it with one hand tied behind their back tonight because they have a starter down. When we come back, the shorthanded Spurs taking on the Dallas Mavericks or I-35 rivals. Can they pull out of their three-game tailspin? And is Dak good to go? Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs will try to snap out of their three-game losing streak tonight when they face their I-35 rivals in Dallas. But in order to do that, the Spurs will be shorthanded without the newest member of their starting lineup, Doug McDermott. His right knee swelled up after the Lakers' 125-121 overtime loss and will miss tonight's game, even though the MRI on that knee was negative. For the Mavs, they may be without Christoph Porzingis, who's having back issues following their 116-106 win on Tuesday against the Rockets. Kelvin Johnson was asked for his reaction not being on the floor down the stretch against the Lakers. A couple other guys had it rolling, you know, and that's the name of the game. You know, I'm off for my teammates, and if they got it going, and I need to sit out first to win the game, then that's what we got to do. But uh, obviously, you know, I'd like to be out there. But, uh, you know, I trust Coach Pop. I trust his decision-making. I trust the coaching staff and everything they got going for us. So, you know, they, I guess, you know, so I, mean, I trust them. And there's no need for me to question uh, what they're doing. Not going to question what Pop is doing. That's right. 7.30 tip time tonight. The San Antonio Spurs G League team, the Austin Spurs, opened their training camp today at the practice facility. Among those being assigned to the Austin Spurs, number one draft pick Joshua Primo, who can now get valuable playing time for more experience. It's great knowing that I just get to come in, continue to get extra reps, continue to learn, and be ready for when I go back to the team. I mean, so many guys have come through here and seen so much success. I think it's only just helpful coming here. All right, second round draft pick Joe Vizcamp will also join Primo with the Austin Spurs. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys return to practice this week following their bye week and getting ready for their Sunday night showdown with the Minnesota Vikings. The big question is, will Dak Prescott be able to suit up after he suffered that right calf strain on the final play of the Cowboys' 35-29 overtime victory against the Patriots in New England? Prescott was officially listed as limited in practice, but his teammates tell us he looks okay to them. Regular, same Dak, same Dak. Very good. Uh, he looks great. He looks great, you know, uh, in and out his, you know, drops. But, I mean, I don't know the restrictions on him or what's going on, but, I mean, to me, he looks perfectly fine. All right, congratulations to the Houston Astros. We've gotten even with the Atlanta Braves after last night's win in Game 2 of the World Series. The Astros broke it open with a four-run second. Never looked back. Martin Maldonado is the ninth hitter in the lineup. Was able to pull this shot through the left side to score two, including Jose Siri, who scored all the way from first in the Astros' 7-2 victory. We'll wrap it up after this. All right, before we let you go, we want to give you a live picture of our city right here. It is 75 degrees right now. Yeah, and you're looking at the airport. Welcome to San Antonio, where the current temperature is 75. We'll see you at 6.